rusty spires of the Union Carbide pesticide plant overshadow the Indian town of Bhopal. And since a catastrophic chemical spill, the plant has lain idle, a ghostly reminder of the world's worst industrial accident. The problem became apparent in the early hours of December the 3rd, 1984, when large amounts of toxic gas escaped the plant after water entered one of the tanks. Workers fled the compound, but Union Carbide had no emergency plan in place to protect the densely populated neighboring town. When the sun rose the next morning, thousands of bodies lined the streets. The official estimate was 4,000 dead. However, authorities dumped thousands of bodies in the Armada River, and independent agencies believe more than 8,000 people perished in the disaster. Half a million people were exposed to the toxic chemicals. Thousands of survivors have suffered severe health effects and died from related illnesses in the years since. From the beginning, American company Union Carbide distanced itself from the spill, claiming the plant was independently run by an Indian version of the company, and thus it could not be held accountable for any safety shortcomings. And there was no lack of those. One former safety officer told the BBC he had resigned from his position with Union Carbide because he was so dissatisfied with the company's response to his complaints on how the plant was being run. Another senior engineer said safety standards at the plant were so poor, he believed it should have been shut down. However, Union Carbide denied the leak occurred because of the substandard operations and produced a report from an engineering consulting firm that stated that water had entered the tank because of a deliberate act of sabotage. Meanwhile, Bhopal residents demanded that someone be brought to account for the accident and called on the Indian government to lay charges. The Bhopal Gas Leak Act was passed in March 1985, allowing the government to act on the victim's behalf, and court action was launched. Laws are very strict, but we do not have skilled people in sufficient number and with skills to inspect the system as required. Secondly, many times, very costly or expensive sophisticated equipment are operated and managed by people who do not have training or skills for the same. And this may result in sometimes unexpected behavior of this equipment. Despite being assured that he would not face criminal sanctions, Union Carbide's American boss, Warren Anderson, was arrested and charged with manslaughter when he arrived in Bhopal a few days after the disaster. He was released on bail and fled back to the United States. He has never returned to India, where a warrant remains for his arrest. The Indian government has not pressed for his extradition. On the anniversary of the tragedy every year, survivors burn effigies of Anderson and Indian politicians to express their anger at the slow pace of justice. Union Carbide settled out of court with the Indian government in 1999 agreeing to pay damages of $407 million. Those who lost family members received an average of $2,000 each. But there is still no agreement over who will pay for the cleanup. Bhopal remains dangerously polluted with mercury, lead and chloroform among the toxic cocktails still present in deadly quantities. Multinational company Dow Chemical absorbed Union Carbide in 2001, but refuses to take responsibility for future payouts.